Hello everyone, welcome to Designing a Rocket in Realism Overhaul in Kerbal Space Program 1.12.5. This is a bare bones install of Realism Overhaul as I put together in the Installing Realism Overhaul for Kerbal Space Program 1.12.5 video. And so we don't have a lot of part mods, we also don't have the RSS Cape Canaveral scenery, but this is what I would consider to be a very straightforward basic install of Realism Overhaul that you can then add more mods to the top of, assuming you have enough RAM. And still, we will be able to do basic things with it. In fact, we could probably do basically everything with it. We'll see. I haven't actually tried this out yet in this version. We'll see what engines in particular we have available to us. But one thing to note is that I have TAC life support instead of Kerbalism. Uh, functionally, their life support treatment will be about the same, but there are some differences otherwise. So that's just a minor note, but we are going to be dealing with probes this time, and I'm not going to do communications right now. Communications is a separate topic. We're talking about designing the rocket, and I want to send a probe over to the moon. So let us try that out, and I'll talk about what is necessary. So if we're going to do probes, you'll note that we just have the stock parts mainly now. Uh, for now, uh, we have modified stock parts except we also have procedural parts and procedural tanks so all the engines are modified stock engines we have a lot more of them apparently and that's because there are multiple variants of different things some of them are mar marked non-RO and so does the skipper I guess they decided not to turn that into something which is a shame because that could be useful there's entirely too many nuclear engines <laughs> somebody went overboard with those um, but we do have here the Thor engine, that's the core of the Thor rocket, and then this is for the Atlas rocket, and this is also for the Atlas rocket. So one thing you can do is think about how real rockets were put together and use them as a basis because we have some of their engines here, the F1 engine from Saturn V, the H1 engine from Saturn I, and uh, it seems like a certain lack of, uh, well, that's a Soviet engine, so... Not, not as many Soviet engines as we'd like, though, if you had the DLC, I don't have the DLC installed in here right now, so the Making History DLC would probably give us the RD-107 because it has the Soyuz replica. But first of all, we want a probe core, and if you're going to design something in Realism Overhaul, the first thing you need to do is keep the, keep the payload small. Uh, that is the most important thing. So what we're looking for is the smallest capable probe core, and here we have 0.23 tons, 0 0.4, 0 0.14. Now, sometimes there'll be other requirements. The Aerobee sounding rocket telemetry unit is not great in general. Uh, its own transmitter is fairly weak, but it will have, depending on what you're doing and whether you're in career mode, it'll have other limitations. Right now, it doesn't. Um, it also takes 100 watts of electric charge, which is not great. You have to sort of balance out the mass of the unit versus the mass of the solar panels that will be required in order to power it. And if you need to deal with costs because you're in career mode, that's another thing. My favorite uh, in general is this early controllable core. Uh, not only does it have a lower resource consumption for command, but it also has a hibernation mode that reduces its resource consumption to 1%. And you'll note that the antenna rating is much better than for the sounding rocket telemetry unit even so that's the same mass but that's an earlier earlier thing even the early controllable core is pretty heavy compared to actual control cores these days it's because it's 50 kilograms but it's a good start it comes with nice electric charge it even has some room in the modular fuel tank most things have a modular fuel tank of some sort uh, if only to contain the electric charge that they have and so modular fuel tank is a con configurable fuel tank in stock you'll have uh, fuel tanks that already have everything in them, the liquid fuel and oxidizer. I, I don't actually have an example of that because I don't have a non-RO part. Uh, but for Realism Overhaul, they come with this tank UI. And the tank UI allows you to put a whole bunch of different types of resources in. And so right now we only have electric charge. It's filled up with electric charge. and But we could theoretically remove some electric charge and put something else in if we wanted to. I don't think I want to right now. However, not all of the resources that could be available will be available for every kind of tank. So we have a variety of different tanks here, like balloon tank, isogrid, conventional structure, service module. 
But one thing we'll see is that, let's say with the balloon tank, which is the pickiest, uh, the balloon tank, first of all, always has to have near 100% utilization, so that's one picky thing. Uh, another picky thing is that it's not going to be able to carry stuff like food, water, and oxygen. And some of the other resources might not be able to go in, though it's still a fairly good selection. We won't talk about the specifics of all these just yet, but if we instead go with, say, a service module tank, and there's different efficiencies to the service module tank. If you're in sandbox, you'll just want the best type. Um, in career, that'll cost more. So uh, we have, for instance, electric charge, which we didn't have with the with the balloon tank. But also, food is available. Water, uh, oxygen, water was in the uh, the balloon tank as well. But there's a longer list of possible resources with this tank. And so you're going to have to pick the right tank for the right job. The service module tanks are heavier than the balloon tanks. So the balloon tank is 8 kilograms empty right now. This service module tank is 14. That's sort of deceptive because um, it's got to get even worse when you put stuff in. But uh, yeah, so you'll want the more efficient tank for the job. In this case, what we want is a little probe that can... I, I want to land on the moon. First of all, though, we need to see if we have an engine that can allow us to do that. And the basic kind of engine that would allow you to do that is this, this little thruster here. right? A 1 kN thruster is the most important engine in Realism Overhaul. And there are multiple reasons for this, but first of all, unlimited ignitions. And you're not going to appreciate this enough until you face the lack of ignitions, but most engines that are launch engines will just have one ignition, like this H1 or F1. So that's a big difference between realism overhaul and stock. And some of them will have multiple ignitions. Some of them will only be able to ignite on the ground. So when this says ignitions ground support clamps, that means it can only ignite on the ground. You can't use it as an upper stage engine. Uh, others like these nuclear engines have four. I don't know why. Uh, but you'll see one is the norm. And uh, if not ground support clamps, this this Soviet engine has uh, five, which is sort of nice, a rarity. And uh, this one has five. This is one of my favorite engines, the RD58. It's very useful. So keep that one in mind for stages going to the moon. In fact, we'll we'll have that hanging out. It's probably physically a bit bigger than it ought to be. But anyway, uh, so we have this one uh, kiln in thruster, but. It's unlike this one here. This one uh, uh, will be fine, but this one, uh, oops, this one says needs high pressure tanks. Well, high pressure tanks are a particular selection in the tanks. Uh, so if we have conventional isogrid, I don't think, let me, I'm pretty sure balloon tanks can't be. Yeah, balloon tanks don't have a high pressure option. But let's say this isogrid one which is a good one. Uh, basically, the order goes, the conventional are the least good, the isogrids are a little bit more efficient, and then the balloons are nice but limited, and then service modules you should only use for like food, water, and oxygen because they're really heavy, right? Remember, the service module at this size is 14 kilograms, this is nine, so this is much better. And in fact, there are multiple versions of it. There's the basic, I know there's a lot of these things, but, uh, there's the high pressure, that's the HP, that's refined, but that's not high pressure. There's a high pressure refined. <laughs> There's aluminum lithium gridded uh, tank, and then a high pressure aluminum grid, uh, lithium gridded tank, and then there's a composite tank and a refined composite tank, but composite tank isn't high pressure, so I don't know why. But anyway, high pressure aluminum gridded tank will be fine for now. We'll just go with that. But no, now, with the high pressure, it's gone to 30 kilograms compared to 9. So if you can avoid using a high pressure tank, that would be great. Because uh, the high pressure tanks are much, 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 much heavier. So, but some engines like the 1 kN thruster require it. And generally, you want to only use them for little tiny things on probes. And so this refined one is 27. And then the aluminum lithium is 22. I think I'll go with the 22. I think that's better. So, uh, we have our little guy here. 
and we put in we don't want nitrogen so next thing to note is that uh, not all engines have this f uh, feature but the one kilonewton thruster, two kilonewton, then not the RV. Just these two, and then the RCS thrusters have the option to switch propellants. Uh, I don't think any of the others here will. So, yeah. The option to switch propellants is available under this engine UI. And so we have nitrogen, and this will be true for the, for the RCS thrusters as well, uh, though, that's really ambitious right there. <laughs> That's Hydrolox. Uh, I didn't realize they had added some of these. Okay, about uh, basic probish kind of thing. You can, if you want, like realistic, might be Hydrazine or MMH and Mon3. These are typically used for probes. And so I'll use MMH and Mon3 instead of going with something special. And there's this tech level thing. That is more relevant to career. For Sandbox, you can just put it all the way up unless you're role-playing some particular situation. So, now we have MMH and Mon3 here, and you know, when I right-click, even though I had a high-pressure tank, it says need high-pressure tanks, and that's because we haven't filled this. And it automatically gives you the option to fill, fill it with the right propellants, with the right fuel and oxidizer mix. So you always want to use this in order to get the right mix. And because it's a high pressure tank and is a pressure fed engine, it not only has MMH Mon3 and Mon3, but it also has helium. Okay, so the helium is going to provide the pressure uh, when the propellants deplete. Otherwise, there's a lot of empty tank and it loses pressure. Uh, so we have to carry the helium to pressurize the tank. And if you are carrying cryogenic propellants, you will want these MLI layers. That's multi layer insulation. A multi-layer insulation will keep the tank uh, cool so that the propellants don't boil off. But these are not cryogenic propellants. The cryogenic propellants are liquid oxygen, liquid hydrogen, and liquid methane primarily. So we don't need them. Uh, need the MLI layers for this. MLI layers should always be put on if you are carrying those propellants. There is no downside. You can see here, uh, let's go with, so this mech chip, if you're not familiar with it, very important for reading our delta V because the stock delta V isn't going to read properly. Um, so what you'll notice is that if I put the MLI layers on, it cuts down on the delta V, but not that much, right? It's about 100 meters per second out of 5,000. So not that big a deal. Now, if we are going to be and let's, uh, I, I'm not doing communications right now, but we'll build the probe like we need communications. So we've got a Commutron 16. That may not be enough to communicate with the moon. It depends on how the... Because if you're doing career, you're going to have real antennae. And if you're interested in comms, you might be using the mod real antennae. Uh, and that will change all the stats for these. So in that the Commutron 16 is uh, reasonable for this purpose. So I'll leave the Commutron 16 here. And then we would want some solar panels, but probably not that much, because remember, this probe core can hibernate. So uh, we just need a little bit. And maybe this tiny solar panel will do. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Extendable solar panels would be nice too, but this should be enough. I mean, base rate for this probe core is 50 watts, so... Okay, so and these are um, these are each 31.5 watts, so that should be quite good enough. And then how about some landing legs? Now we don't have any reaction wheels in the probe core. Well, yeah, in the probe cores for realism overhaul, we don't have reaction wheels. We do have reaction wheels. They are the, the stock ones. This is a small inline reaction wheel. That's a reaction wheel. That's a reaction wheel. And this one, hmm. Well, I'm a bit confused about the stats actually at this point. Uh, this small inline reaction wheel has 0 0.0001 by, but it's 0 0.05 tons and 100 watts. This one is 0 0.1 tons. It's 1.86, which I swear is way higher, way way higher, and 500 watts. And this 10.6 torque. I think they've made a mistake. I think what they intended to do was multiply this one by that factor, 1.86, and 
and instead it's written in 1.86 and this one was supposed to have 10 times that one but instead it has just 10.6 so these might be uh, something they need to fix because that's way too much torque uh, for realism overhaul generally the the reaction wheels in realism overhaul are practically useless except for stations or something big like that so keep that in mind okay so that said uh, we don't have reaction wheels so we'll need to put on RCS thrusters I'm gonna tuck this in so it looks cuter and we have the landing legs and we still have 4,000 meters per second so next up we could do with the RCS thrusters and we should have them using the same propellant as we have here. So the RCS thrusters are here and if you have other mods of course you'll have nicer RCS thrusters. These are pretty basic. My general idea is that well the space shuttle had two kilonewton thrusters and it was 80 tons. So this is less than one ton. 20 newton thrusters would be good enough for this. But the smallest we have, I think, is these 28-45. It's 28-45 because there's difference between using one propellant or another. So the top end, uh, like the MH and Mon3 that we are using, uh, will provide more like the 45. Actually, the nitrogen doesn't even provide anywhere near that. It provides 8 newtons. So anyway, I don't know what they use for reference. But the MH and Mon3 provides nearly 45, so... And actually, if you pump up the tech level, it provides 54. Okay, so now we have RCS thrusters that can provide that, and we still have 4,000 meters per second. Is this optimal? Well, uh, let's talk about the general principle for optimal staging in realism overhaul, and in general, actually, it works in stock as well. And that's that whatever your ISP is here, 321, multiply it by 10, actually, it's 9.81, but. Uh, we'll say multiply by 10 is close enough and that's what you want for your stage 3210 meters per second would be good uh, there's mathematical reasons for this but we'll gloss over that for now uh, note that there's a pred predicted residuals thing here uh, 3.54 percent that means that not all of the propellants that we have in here can be used that predicted residuals depends on the type of tank primarily so it doesn't like high pressure tanks very much so that's another downside to using the high pressure tanks but we don't have to worry about that this delta v figure gives us a good approximation of the delta v it's not exactly right because unfortunately predicted residuals has a little bit of rng in it and so the random there's a random number that gets generated that uh, creates a wobble about the residuals so that might not be exactly how much delta v we get but the reason we're looking for 3,210 is for optimal staging, meaning that if we put more than that in here, then maybe we would be getting less from a more efficient stage down below. And, but it's good to make sure that the stages are doing what they need to do. And we need 2,600 meters per second to land on the moon. We need 800 to capture into orbit around the moon. And this doesn't really need to do the transfer. We can definitely use a more efficient stage with Hydrolox to do the transfer, or maybe this engine here, the RD58, to do the transfer. Uh, we may or may not want to carry such an engine with us to the moon because that uses liquid oxygen, and then we'll have to put the MLI layers on, but that's not a big deal. But, you know, the, the boil-off will have some effect. So... Basically, what we want the little probe to do is capture around the moon and then land. So that's 2,600, which is a generous amount for landing. Uh, you can do it with less, plus 800. So what we really need here is 3,400, which will be closer to our, our ideal here. So we might as well do that. I guess these landing struts are not tweak scalable now. Gosh darn it. So that's, another, that's a downside to this. Now, one thing we could do is re reduce the utilization. That'll reduce the dry mass a little bit, but and retain the shape of the tank. Uh, but it's not as efficient as just shaping the tank properly for the amount of fuel in the first place. So it'll help you out a little bit, but not as much as would be it would be if you just had the tank fully utilized. 
So 3,400 is about there. If you're landing on the moon, you should also check that your thrust to weight ratio is okay. This is the thrust to weight ratio that you want up here. And the moon requires 0.16 minimum. That's the gravity of the moon. I generally shoot for twice that in order to make sure I can slow down soon enough. So this is pretty good. So we're aiming for 0.32 and we get 0.38. So as far as I can tell, this is a happy little probe. So if you follow my installing realism overhaul video, you'll have procedural fairings. And procedural fairings are these guys here. There's all sorts of things. What you need to know, there's three kinds. There's the bolt tail ones, which I never use. Uh, there's the payload adapters, which is what we're going to use here. And then there's the inner stages. And the payload adapters are just for the top when you have the payload. And they automatically have a decoupler on the top. And they have sizing like this. And, well, it starts to bend in like that. I want a straight rocket like that. So I'll make it, let's say, 2.4 meters. Just to make it nice. And then we have the procedural fairing part. Now there's procedural fairing and the procedural fairing recolorable. So if you want a non-basic procedural fairing, and some other mods will add more procedural fairings to this, but if you want recolorable, you can have various colors here, but if you use the recoloring UI, you can just pick other colors here and then actually customize the color as you like it. And there's a second in detail option there. So we, we could sort of make it red, maybe. And there's all sorts of possibilities. For instance, pedal hinge enabled you want to uh, have it open like that, which is fancy, but I don't, And but that's super helpful if you're going to have a recoverable stage, isn't it? And then uh, use preset for the fairing shape. Right now we're, we're on egg, but you could have an atlas shape, a delta shape. Jupiter, Titan, Long March, Proton, well, certain Proton, Soyuz, Conic. Um, I tend to use the Soyuz one a lot, but if you want to uh, not use a preset, you can really, really configure this thing in great detail, in exhausting detail. <laughs> uh, I think I'll just leave the Soyuz preset. I don't want to deal with that. Okay, so we have that. Now, the rest of the rocket. And the same principle applies. We're going to try and make the rocket so that the stages are optimal. Now in real life they generally don't. The two real life rockets that are closest to optimal as I've described based on the ISP are the Proton rocket and the Saturn V. Uh, the reason most rockets aren't optimized like that is because that requires three stages. Uh, generally to make orbit around the Earth because most of the engines are going to have around 300 ISP which means that they get 3,000-ish meters per second and then to get 9,000-ish 9, meters per second which is what you need to get into orbit around the Earth you need three stages so they almost never <laughs> go with that uh, you can uh, if you don't have a budget but if you are doing career mode, you might not want to, and you might want to go with two. In which case, you should sort of proportionally make the one that has the higher ISP do more work, if you can. Sometimes you can't. It depends on the burn times. That We don't have to worry about any of that here. But in career mode with RP-1, if you're using test flight, you will need to worry about the burn times. Here we don't need to worry about the burn times. So there are all these other pressures when it comes to designing rockets in Realism Overhaul that we're not talking about right now. But as you can see, uh, this little RD-58 is already doing quite a lot here, but uh, the thrust weight ratio ain't great. So the RD-58, there's different variants of the RD-58. We can go into engine UI. So up here, the engine UI uh, was to switch fuels. For most other engines, what it'll do is it'll change the variant of the engine, which sometimes changes fuels, but most of the time doesn't. 
and they'll have all sorts of different stats. The base version here has five ignitions and 338 seconds of ISP, but the upgrade versions have better ISP over time and also increased ignitions over time. And then this S version uses Sintin instead of a keros uh, instead of a normal kerosene. Sintin is a um, synthetic kerosene. RG1 is like RP1 kerosene. So there's a variety of these. This has 15 ignitions. I'm going to go with the RD58. This one, 349 seconds of ISP, which is pretty good for a kerosene oxygen engine. And seven ignitions. That's nice. Now we do want to keep in mind what this engine is actually trying to do and what we're trying to do with this is to transfer the probe over to the moon which takes about 3200 meters per second let's say and potentially also com complete orbit because we don't want the next stage to stay in orbit. So in order to deorbit the next stage we'll have this complete orbit and then transfer to the moon and since it has multiple ignitions that's okay. But we can also have more efficient tanks. This does not require high pressure. And I'll go for aluminum lithium gridded tank. And suddenly it gets a lot of delta V. <laughs> okay, well I just want to make sure that that's not a fluke of something. Uh, oh, maybe we had the wrong mixture. Maybe we had the initial mixture for this engine. So watch out for those fuel mixtures. If you change the engine configuration like uh, this one versus that one might have different mixtures between the RG1 and the liquid oxygen. So whenever you change the engine, make sure you also refill the tank. And that's high pressure, we don't want that. So yeah. And also note that the residuals are much less than the high pressure tank, 1% instead of 3%. And so we're looking for completion of orbit and then transfer, but this is way too much delta V for this particular stage. The burn time for this engine was about eight minutes or so. And we could use it a lot. It certainly has a thrust weight ratio in this scenario. And in real life, they probably would use that a lot. So in a not mathematically pleasant way, but in an efficient way in terms of cost, we could probably, this has enough thrust weight ratio to do the last 4,000 meters per second of orbit and then transfer and it'll be within its burn time so we'll probably do it for that it's just because we have a very light payload here we should probably be using a smaller engine than this if we are particularly efficient we could even uh, make this the next stage here and so let's see can we have a smaller transfer engine in order to make this even more efficient we could have multiple of these thrusters which is the safest because these have infinite ignitions and generally don't have failures even with test flight they're the safest sort of thing to use and so what you can conceivably do for a transfer stage so that's the decoupler we have procedural decouplers from procedural parts but these will require high pressure tanks that's the downside but I think this will be nice and the reason we're doing this is because I saw this was getting way too much delta V and with a decent thrust weight ratio, which suggests that we should add another stage in here. And so we'll have a separate transfer stage here, which will be helpful. This has to be high pressure. This we need to change to MHM on three. We might as well use the same thrusters. Then what we want is 3,200 meters per second but we're adding RCS thrusters afterwards, so something like that. Now that's 16 minutes, so that's not great. I want the node at the bottom here because this wants to, ooh, if it comes back, wants to attach to something, and I don't want to put like a girder on there. So I'm going to just have three of them. Realism Overhaul has been doing some sort of thrust variance thing, so in order to mitigate some of that, I'll also tilt them like this so that they go through this sort of go through the combined center of mass. Now these are currently getting the same 3,210, so we, we probably should sort of shade that a little bit longer. And we need the RCS thrusters, probably a little bit bigger than those. So next class up. Uh, to be honest, I think actually these will be fine. And they're still configured for animation mod 3, so they're still okay.
Make sure staging is right. Okay, and 0.59 thrust weight ratio is nice for the transfer, no problems there. And then when we add this stage on and get its engine down here, it's still pretty good. I mean, it's still giving us plenty of delta V. Make sure the RCS thrusters, unlike stock, the RCS thrusters are separately staged. Uh, so that they're disabled initially and get enabled like this. So you have to make sure to stage these are the RCS thrusters, those are the engines. Make sure to move the RCS thrusters where they need to be staged. So, um, so strictly speaking, we should only be looking for 3,500, let's say, meters per second from this. But I want a two-stage rocket anyway, so we'll go with this. And so this will be provi providing nearly 5,000. So we're looking about 4,500 for the bottom. And that sounds like the job of this guy, uh, the LR-79, which is the Thor engine. What sort of principles could you use for deciding on what engine to use? Generally speaking, I like a ratio of 5, so uh, I would like, if it's a 1 kN thruster here, I times 5, and then so I want 5 kN here. This is actually a 2 kN thruster now, because we changed the propellant. So 2 kN here, so we want 10 here. And what we're getting here is actually 13-ish. It's 4.4 times 3 is 13.2. And so a little bit more than 5 times. Well, let's say we've got 13 here, so we want 5 times that, so about 65-ish. And then here we're getting 83, so that's a little bit more than we need, but it, uh, and that's why we can do a little bit more with it. Uh, but it's not too bad. Actually, the thrust weight ratio is a little bit weak there. So maybe I'm going to go for 0.75 on the thrust weight ratio there and make it like that. That puts us closer to half and half between this stage and the bottom stage. So as far as the upper stages go, you don't need a thrust weight ratio of 1. And 0.75 is just fine normally. It depends on how long your first stage is going to take. And the higher up this starts, the lower that can be. If you're practically in orbit, you can have just one of the transfer stages, like a 0.3 thrust weight ratio if you want. Uh, if you insist, some rockets go too far with this, though. I'm thinking of you, Delta IV. <laughs> anyway, so, all right. Uh, we have... A good enough stage here. I don't think I need RCS on this stage. If you wanted to control roll, you could, but I don't think we need to. And you can recolor these procedural tanks just the same way as you do the fairings. Uh, it's just this recoloring UI. And we'll just uh, paint it white, I think. I'll also tuck in this engine a little bit just for looks. And we want an inner stage this time, not the payload adapter. I'll have this kind. And we don't want that shroud. I mean, you could if you wanted to. And we'll just continue with a 2.4 meter rocket. And I'll adjust if that becomes necessary. I'll just copy Alt, click to copy the fairing, and I'm just gonna copy the red section. And then we can resize it. Uh, right now, the height is the the height to the top of that. Oh. That's an important thing to note. There's, uh, I, I've made a mistake. I made a mistake. Um, for the inner stage ones, it says this mode decouples. And so that's the one that we want to add there, otherwise it won't separate. And so the height is the height between the base and that node. And so we don't want that much height here. The extra height is the extra height for the fairings that goes up to the top of the Top, well, to the bottom of the tank, the next tank. So, uh, clicking on this part, extra height, will increase that. Okay, so now we have that, and I want my next tank. Again, I'm going to go with an isogrid structure tank, and 2.4 meters. Basic, this 288. This That's actually not that bad. Mainly, they just increase the thrust on these things. They didn't get better ISP, except at sea level. This proposed one is the only one that gets better sea level, so let's just... Yeah, I think we can just leave it at the S3. Okay, so it's not getting quite as much as I want. We need to look at the sea level thrust weight ratio now, and suddenly it's apparent why they increased the thrust on it. 
we could get more out of the RD58 stage to compensate. I'm surprised it's getting so little. But we're pushing it a little bit. We might need boosters. Uh, or we could go with a more powerful engine. I guess this RD215 would suit. I think the two nozzles actuated independently, so we shouldn't need fins for roll control. Hmm. <laughs> I, I see no gimbling on it. It probably had vernier engines to control it, right? So, this is LR87 li uh, liquid hydrogen edition. That's about the right thrust. Oh, that'll make it easier on me. So, uh, this one uses hydrogen and oxygen, which means it's cryogenic. Developed for Titan C, it says. So it's a little bit iffy. But the thing with hydrogen is it takes a lot more volume. Previously, with our previous propellants, this would have gotten us to 68 tons. Now it's only 31 because of the hydrogen, which is amazing, isn't it? Uh, so we, we need to go wider. The problem is we definitely don't have any verniers that run off of hydrogen and oxygen. So we'll put fins. And just a regular deluxe winglets will do just nicely. Don't quite look the part, but it's fine. You could use the procedural wings. I guess we should do that for demonstration. So these are the procedural control surfaces and wings added by B9 procedural wings. Uh, there are the control surfaces, the regular wings fixed, and the all-moving wings. So what we would want is, let's say, a space plane all-moving wing. Um, when it says rated, I, it's not clear to me that there's much difference between these, except for the temperature. So the temperature tolerance is the main thing. And you press J in order to get this dialog in order to control, or you, I mean, or to get the handlebars anyway. Okay, then close. So those will be all moving, and once again, you can right click on it to get the recoloring UI if you want to paint them. And also, we can adjust the thickness here. Launch clamps, very important in realism overhaul. The engines take time to spool up. So you need to ignite them, then release the clamps, always. Um, SRBs, you can ignite with the clamps, but not the liquid engines. Well, it's red and white, <laughs> so uh, I'll use the Japanese. There's a song battle called Kohaku, where a red team fights a white team, so we'll, we'll go with that. Kohaku won.